can use a standard debugger like GDB on embedded systems. Let's find out. Hey folks, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another embedded systems video. I recently posted a video about embedded C and embedded C++ and how they are and are not different from normal C and C++. Check out that video if you missed it, but after that video, a lot of you expressed some interest in hearing more about debugging embedded systems. And that's a pretty massive topic, but I thought I would scratch the surface today and talk about a little trick that is super helpful and a lot of people who are new to embedded systems just simply don't know about. Because it's funny, a lot of people, when they get into embedded systems, it's like, they forget all the debugging that they ever learned and they immediately go back to print style debugging, basically what they did when they were a freshman in college, just getting started and they just start polluting their code with print statements everywhere, sending that data over a serial connection, USB cable, a UART, something like that. And sometimes you may be able to get by with that, but you know on your laptops, desktops, and servers just how terrible print style debugging can be. And so why would it be any different in our embedded code? So if you get nothing else from this video, basically the message of this video is before you start down that path, you always, no matter what platform you're working on, you wanna take a step back and see what tools are available to you. Because you might be able to use a real debugger on your code, even if you're working on a microcontroller. And today I wanna to show you a quick example of how that can work. Now, before we jump into code, I just wanna say that as usual, all source code for this video and other videos is available through Patreon. A huge thanks for all of you that support the channel and keep this channel running. Also, I know we all say this, but consider giving this video a like if you're enjoying it. It really does make a big difference in how the algorithm spreads the word about this channel. But all that aside, let's jump into it. So today I'm working with this MSP430 FR5994. This is simply just a board that I had on my desk. It's one that I use in my lab a lot for a lot of different research projects. And so I thought it would be good for today's example. Right now, I've just got it connected over this USB cable to my laptop. This uh, board that you're looking at, of course, has more than just the microcontroller on it. This is a launch pad, uh, which is basically just a development board provided by TI. And of course, what I'm about to show you works on these launch pads, but it could also work on just about any custom device you make. Now, another thing I wanna point out about this device is it has two sections. So you can see there's sort of this side and this side. This side is here really for debugging and testing and programming. Um, this other side is the device itself. This is the microcontroller and some of the stuff that's plugged into it. And I also wanna point out that these jumpers right here, these basically allow you to electrically separate these two components. So if I have some kind of device that I've developed that isn't this, like it's some other MSP430 device, maybe it's a sensor, maybe it's a little robot or whatever, I can actually pull these off and I can use this programmer debugger side over here and actually use it on some other device. And maybe we'll do that in a future video, but I just wanted to point that out in case it's helpful information. Now, as far as code today, I'm going to use the ADC code right here from my previous ADC video that I posted a while back. Now I could use just about any embedded MSP430 program for this example. If any of this confuses you, please check out that video and my other embedded videos, they'll get you up to speed. But let's just say we've got a program, this one will do for today. Now this is a simple program that just measures some ADC value, but let's say that I have a problem with this program. I wanna debug it, it has some issue, and I don't really wanna start polluting my code with prints, so what can I do? And it's important to keep in mind that the answer will vary for each different microcontroller that you work with, but for this MSP430, I have a few different options. Now, the first thing that I'm going to use, and you'll remember this from before, is MSP debug. Now, this is a great program created by Daniel Beer. Uh, props to Daniel, thank you for making this publicly available and for free. Now, you've seen it before on this channel because I've used it to put new code on my microcontroller. And it also has a lot of other debugging capabilities. So if you look down here, you can see, let me just expand this a little bit. You can come down, I mean, lots of different options. I'm gonna kind of skip through those and different drivers, different ways that you can connect to these devices. But if we come down here, you can see there's a bunch of different commands. Okay, so these include things like being able to read and write memory on the microcontroller. It can start and stop execution. It can gather power statistics somewhere down here, I think. Yeah, so there's a bunch of power stuff. But the command that I wanna focus on today is this one is it can actually help us use GDB on this device. And this is gonna keep things familiar. So we're gonna focus on this GDB command today. So let's see how this works. 
So first off, I just want to look at my rake file really quick. This is the rake file I used before, nothing special. I could use a make file. Uh, just before we get started, let's come in here and just make sure we've already compiled and, and let's just install the code. Make sure to put some new code on this device so that I know that I'm working with the latest code. Notice that I use MSP debug in the rake file to actually do this process. Now, before we get too far, let's just take a look at a few different things in our rake file here because our compile flags up here are going to be important. We need to make sure that we generate a program that MSP debug and GDB are going to be able to use. Now, normally when we're using GDB on our local machines, typically we just need dash G and that's enough. But here we're gonna be a little more explicit. So there's a few things I just wanna point out. The first thing that I add here is this dash O zero, that's just turning off optimizations. You can turn on optimizations, but as always, you're gonna find that debugging is a little more complicated because the code you wrote and the code that you're actually running may not be the same. I'm gonna use dash G three here. This just basically, it's like dash G, but it basically brings me up to debugging level three turns on all the debugging information. And then I'm gonna use the dash G GDB that specifically generates GDB style debug information. And I'm going to tell it to use dwarf two style debug information. Okay, this is just, this is what's expected by GDB for the MSP430. And so this is gonna be important. Also while we're here, note that I'm actually using C++ here, even though I'm not really using classes or templates or any of the C++ fancy features. And for this example, it doesn't really matter. We could use the C compiler as well. Just for today's example, it just shouldn't make a difference, but this is what I'm using. And I often do because it makes it easy if I ever do want to decide to use classes or something that is C++ only, then I can usually just add those in. Now, what I'm about to do here, you can do in one terminal. You notice I've created two and, I'm, and that's for easy illustration because there's a few different moving parts that we're gonna look at. So the first one, let's come up to here. The first thing I'm going to do is we're gonna start MSP debug. So here I'm going to just say MSP debug TI lib, that's the driver we're using. And then I'm going to run the GDB command. Now, when I run this, you'll notice that it connects with the MSP430 and then it just sits there listening on port 2000 and that's where GDB is going to connect. So at this point, it's just waiting. It's just waiting for us to tell it what to do. It says, okay, I'm in GDB mode. I'm ready to work. And so then to make it work, we're gonna jump over into our other terminal and now we actually run GDB. And we're gonna do that like this, MSP430 elf GDB, just to make sure we're running the version of GDB that's designed for my MSP430. And let's give it the name of our binary. Mine is adc.elf, yours will be whatever you name it. So when I run this, this basically is going to start up GDB. We're used to seeing this, assuming you've seen GDB before. It's gonna load the symbols from our binary. You can see that happening right down here, but we're still not connected to our microcontroller. So to do this, we need another command. We basically just tell it that we want the target, the, the device that we're actually debugging to be a remote device and we connect on localhost 2000. Okay, so as soon as I run this command, now this is gonna say GDB, please connect to localhost on port 2000, and now we're in business. So now if we look over here to our other window, you can see that sure enough, a client has connected. So that's that connection is in place and we cleared our breakpoints and we're reading registers. And then here on the GDB side, you notice that it's ready to debug and it's currently at underscore underscore CRT zero underscore start. Okay, which I believe is the start routine for the C runtime. I haven't actually dug into it, but I believe that's what we're looking at here. And this is what's eventually going to call my main function. And now at this point, things go pretty much like we would expect them to do if we were debugging locally. We can set a breakpoint in main and you know, say I'm interested in some line, let's look over at our code here. Let's say that I'm interested in what's going on here at line 57, I can also just come down and break 57. So we can set a breakpoint there, that's really straightforward. One difference is that if we were debugging locally, we would normally use the run command, but that's not gonna work here because our code's already running. The device has already started, we're basically already stopped in it. And so instead we're going to use the continue command or C, and then that's gonna land me at main. If I run it again, it's going to land me at that line 57. So you can see I'm stopping at my breakpoints. It's showing me what code I'm on. And at this point I can do things like print out the value of a variable. This one's not initialized. It's just been, it's here, but it's, so whatever value it is, who knows, but I can then step over the line 57 and now let's print it out again. So you can see, okay, 
Now the ADC value that it actually got was in millivolts was 365 millivolts. So, okay, so that's cool. And you can, it's not currently connected to anything. So again, this is still pretty meaningless, but if it was connected to something like a sensor, then that would tell us something about the sensor value. Now, this all feels very familiar. Not every microcontroller supports everything that your laptop processor does. Like you might not have hardware support for watch points, for example. And I've definitely run into situations where I was stepping through the code and GDB got confused, either by an interrupt firing or something else. So that's something just to be aware of. But this works pretty well. And once we're done, I can just basically quit here and you notice that it quits both, okay? So my MSP debug session realizes that the client disconnected and so it just closes out and disconnects from my device. Okay, now I know at this point, you're probably looking at this saying, ah, there's there are more moving pieces here than I'm used to using when using GDB. And so let me show you how we can make this a little more convenient because we can script all this so that we don't have to type it over and over again because that's a lot of typing and we're programmers, we don't like to type. So let's do that really quickly. Let's jump back into our rake file and let's just add a task that's going to help us. This is going to make things a little more convenient. So what I'm going to do, let's come here and let's just make a new task. I'm going to call it GDB. And what I'm going to do here is basically just run all of these different pieces in one shell command. So we're going to use the sh command that just does this. So let's start off by just running MSP debug. Hopefully I won't mess this up. Uh, let's run the GDB command. Notice I'm escaping the quotes because otherwise it'll think that I'm ending my command. We're going to put an ampersand here. That's basically going to start up the MSP debug part in a separate process and have it run in the background. And then once that's all set up, then I'm going to run MSP 430 elf GDB. I'm going to add dash Q because I don't want to see that text to the front all the time. So this is quiet mode, just something that might be useful for any of you GDB enthusiasts that may not have seen that before. Let's give it the name of our compiled binary. And then I'm also going to specify that I want a certain command to run every time we run, and that's going to be target remote localhost 2000. And yeah, so that should be our command. So that's basically going to set up our MSP debug in the background. It's going to run GDB in quiet mode with our binary, and it's going to run our command. And if I got this all right, we should be able to just run rake GDB now and it should basically start everything up and get us into position where we can start debugging. Of course, it took a second to get all connected, but once it is, we're good to go. So that's not too bad. It took a little bit of project setup. You know, we, we had to set this task up in our rake file, but it's not too bad. Obviously, this is gonna be a bit different on different microcontrollers. If you're on an AVR, if you're on some kind of ARM microcontroller, you may have a slightly different set of tools and a slightly different setup, but this type of debugging is available on most microcontrollers that you're gonna run into, especially those that are commonly used. And this approach to debugging is definitely not perfect. It's not always going to be suitable. I mean, there are going to be times, let's say that I'm debugging a sensor that's built into a pair of shoes, and there's a bug that only happens when someone's actually running in that pair of shoes. That's not gonna be a situation where I can just plug a USB cable into it and say, uh, run MSP debug on this thing. That's not gonna work. But in a lot of cases, it is gonna work, and this is a super easy way that you can just debug a program. And it's a way that a lot of new embedded systems folks aren't aware of, it's often overlooked. So to me, this is the first place you look. This is the first thing you try when you're trying to debug a tricky situation in an embedded system. So I hope this is helpful. Let me know down in the comments if you have other embedded questions, debugging questions, or just any other programming question that you'd like to see me address in a future video. Drop the video a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you don't want to miss the future videos that are going to totally change your life. And until next week, I'll see you later.